High School. The instructor is Lieutenant Colonel David Wise, and uh, United States Army retired, and Sergeant First Class Jam Jamie M. Bryant Brown, uh, United States Army retired. Would you please rise for the presentation of colors? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I ask that you remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. You may be seated. At this time, I'm seeking approval of the agenda. Could I get a motion to approve? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. It's time for the superintendent's comments. Good evening, parents, members of the community, board members, and teammates. Welcome to the month of April and the beginning of the whirlwind that hallmarks the last 42 days of schools. Over the course of the next two months, we look forward to the many opportunities to celebrate our students' academic, artistic and athletic accomplishments that will fill our days and nights. During the same time, our students and faculty are hard at work maximizing every available instructional moment to ensure our students get the very most out of this year possible. I'm so very proud of the work ethic I see in our classrooms across the school system. I remain convinced that we are in the midst of our finest year ever. I'm excited that high school musical season is upon us. This spring, we will all have the opportunity to enjoy Mamma Mia, Les Mis, Pirates of the Penzance, Beauty and the Beast, Into the Woods, and Alice by Heart as our traditional high schools present their annual musicals. Valley Springs Middle School is also presenting Frozen Junior. The dates and times for all of these shows are available on the arts calendar on our system website. Next Tuesday night, April 16th from 5 to 7 p.m. is our annual family night at the Asheville Mall for the opening of our all-county K-8 visual art show. I can't wait to celebrate our youngest students who are amazing artists. I'm so very appreciative of the priority Buncombe County Schools places on the arts and the opportunities given to students to share and grow their talents. During the month of March, the state anonymously surveyed teachers and certified staff in all 115 school systems using the North Carolina Teacher Working Condition Survey. I could not be more proud of our response rate of 95.73%, our highest response rate in the history of the survey. This is the 20th highest response rate among the 115 North Carolina public school systems and the second highest response rate among the 15 largest public school systems. I believe that our teachers responded at such a high rate because they know that their voice is important, is listened to, and is utilized in leading our school system. We look forward to receiving and using the results from our teachers to guide our efforts and commitment to continuous improvement. I appreciate the survey coordinators and administrators in each school who work very hard to ensure that teachers were able to participate in the survey. This week, we're celebrating Assistant Principals Week in Buncombe County Schools. Assistant Principals are dedicated educators who work tirelessly to bolster teachers, motivate students, support their principal, create a positive learning community, and face the many unpredictable challenges that land on their desk. They play a crucial role 
and this week is dedicated time to recognize them for their hard work and commitment to our students, staff, and schools. Thank you to each of our assistant principals. In the bustling hallways of our schools, there exists a quiet haven, a sanctuary of knowledge, imagination, and discovery, the School Media Center. At its heart beats the dedicated spirit of the school media specialist. With a passion for literature and learning, they guide students through the vast realms of books, fostering curiosity, igniting the imagination, and nurturing minds. They are the guardians of stories, the champions of literacy, and the unsung heroes of education. We celebrate the invaluable contributions of our school media specialists whose tireless efforts enrich the lives of students and shape the future of our world one book at a time. Last week was National School Librarian Day, and this is National School Library Week. We are certainly blessed by all that they do for so many. We know that in Buncombe County Schools, we still have much work to do, and that we can and must continue to improve. We will give our all because our students are worthy of our very best efforts. I just want you to know that I could not be prouder of all that I continue to experience in our classrooms and in our schools. To our team and to our board members, thank you for all that you do for the students, families, teachers, and staff of Buncombe County Schools. Madam Chair, this concludes. Thank you, sir. At this time, uh, we'll, I'll recognize Mr. Ulmer for our good news. Good evening, Madam Chair, board members, Dr. Jackson, BCS families, and teammates. We begin tonight. How's that? Good. We begin tonight with a student who is probably not a frequent user of spell check. Elise Moore is a fourth grader at Estes Elementary School. She was the champion of her school spelling bee, but then moved on to the next level. Not only did Elise represent her school, but also Buncombe County Schools as she competed in the North Carolina Spelling Bee. Elise, could you come forward, please, with your principal, Mr. Dale, and Estes Media Coordinator, Ms. Cook, who Elise credits along with all of her teachers, helping her be so successful at that spelling bee. Come on, come on forward, front and center. The spelling bee. Yeah. And Dr. Jackson and Ms. Churchill, if you'll come forward as well for a photo. I would dare say there is a place reserved for Elise on the Buncombe County Schools communications team Absolutely. with those skills. Congratulations, Elise. Well done. Uh, next, I'd like to share the story of Ellis Gibson. He's a fourth grader at North Buncombe Elementary School. He won first place in the entire state of North Carolina for the Intermediate Division of the North Carolina Department of Transportation's Aviation Art Contest. Ellis, if you would please come forward, along with your art teacher, Ms. Yelton, who's here, and your principal, Ms. Allison, also Madam Chair and Dr. Jackson, will join you. So, Miss Yelton is holding Ellis's artwork. Uh, the theme this year is Air Sports in a Peaceful World. And it fe his artwork features a team of global skydivers surrounding a quilt of flags from all around the world. Mr. Ellis Gibson is now going to go on to national competition. Wow. Congratulations, Ellis. Best of luck to you. Uh, next, a special honor for a longtime teacher from Anka High School. Mr. Kevin Franklin has been named the Western Region Agriculture Teacher of the Year by the North Carolina Agriculture Teachers Association. Mr. Franklin, if you would come forward, please, along with Anka High Principal Jeff Burleson, CTE Director Michelle Smith, and Anka Career Development Coordinator Sherry Riddle. Now, our career technical education director, Ms. Smith, shared that Mr. Franklin's efforts inspire stu students and colleagues alike. Through innovative teaching methods and genuine care for students, he makes a lasting impact on the lives of those he teaches. 
you have to spend no less than 60 seconds in his classroom to see that that is the case. And this is the second time he's won this award. Wow. Congratulations. Wow. Always good things happening in the Buncombe County school system. You can stay up to date following Buncombe County Schools on social media and buncombeschools.net online. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. A lot to be proud of tonight. Our next item on the agenda is the curriculum featured, Dr. Reed. Good evening, Madam Chair, Dr. Jackson, and members of the board. Tonight, our curriculum feature will be a spotlight on our National Board Certified Teachers. Our teachers who achieve this certification are leaders in their profession and in their schools, most importantly, in their classroom. They're innovators. They share their passion, uh, not only with their students, but they also share their passion and even their teaching methods with their peers. Board certified teachers often serve as team leaders, department chairs, coaches, and mentors. This evening, we are so proud to celebrate our newly certified National Board teachers and also those who have renewed their certification. Phil Justin, come on up. Phil Justin is our National Board Support Coordinator for BCS on the side. Uh, by day, he is actually our ELA and Social Studies Specialist for Middle and High Schools. So I welcome Mr. Justin here to tell us a little bit more about our candidates. Thank you, Dr. Reed. Thank you all. Uh, I appreciate you giving me just a couple minutes to talk a little bit about the National Board process as well as to award our newly and renewing uh, teachers with their certificates. Um, so to be a nationally board certified teacher means a lot of things. It means that these teachers have spent roughly about 150 hours um, in addition to their obligations personally and professionally uh, to work on this certification. It means that these teachers are patient because they got to wait the long months between May and December uh, to find out if they actually did in fact certify. Um, and it means a little bit of a pay bump, right, uh, which we can all kind of appreciate. But I think what even more importantly it means, it means that these teachers have demonstrated that they uh, know how to assess where their students are at and know how to individually give these students exactly what they need in the moment that they need it. It also means that these teachers have demonstrated that they can produce relevant, meaningful, engaging instruction in a way that students can connect to and that will further their academic careers um, and then beyond. And it also means, as Dr. Reed mentioned, that they're leaders. They're leaders in their classrooms, they're leaders in their building, in their district, and in their field. The bar that National Board sets is a high one. And one of the reasons that this bar is so high is the authenticity of the experience. You can't fake being a National Board teacher. They are working continuously with the students in front of them in real time and collecting the evidence that they need to show the National Board that they are doing the right thing for their students. It is no small thing. Ultimately, at the end of the day, what these teachers have done or have done and are now renewing is they've achieved that bar. And that is a huge thing to be proud of. And I don't think it's with any hyperbole to say that if every teacher a student had along their journey through education were nationally board certified, that our society honestly would be a better, more equitable place. So I'm, I'm privileged to be a part of that and I'm privileged to welcome all of them to be a part of that. So I encourage you to wear your lanyards with pride. <laughs> um, you deserve it, and your students definitely deserve it. So I'm pleased to say that there are 28 Buncombe County School teachers this year who are newly certified or have renewed certification as National Board Certified Teachers. Many are here to celebrate with us tonight. From the at-large district and central services, if I could get Misty McDaniel from Nesbitt Discovery Academy and Carrie Keita of Curriculum and Instruction, who will be renewing, to join us down here with Ms. Simpkin and Dr. Jackson, and Dr. Reed as well for a photo.
from the Irwin District, our newly certified teacher, Jeff Baggett from Irwin Middle School. You could join us with Ms. Plemons for a photo. From our Owen district, we have a newly certified teacher and a renewing teacher. If Mary Henthorn from Owen High School could join us along with Rebecca Sisler uh, and Miss Buchanan and Dr. Reed for a photo. From the Robertson District, newly certifying Katie Wilson of Avery's Creek Elementary, who also teaches at Hominy Valley. If you could join us with Miss Churchill. From the Reynolds District, our newly certified teacher, teachers, uh, Whitley Burleson of uh, Fairview Elementary and Liza Webster of Cane Creek Middle School. If you could join us with Mr. Elliott for a photo. <laughs> North Buncombe District certainly uh, takes the prize uh, for most teachers this evening. Uh, so if I could have uh, Michelle Hammond from North Buncombe Middle School, Beth Lane of North Buncombe Middle School, Emily House of Weaverville Elementary, Jamie Stowe of North Buncombe High School, and Catherine Zamara from North Buncombe Middle School. If you could join us with Madam Chair for a photo. And last but not least, uh, from the Inca District, renewing teacher Darcy Grimes from Inca Intermediate. If you could join us with Miss Lewis, please. Thank you all for sharing this achievement with us. Uh, if we could have all of our new and renewed board certified teachers follow Michaela to the atrium for a group photo, um, go ahead and grab your stuff as well. Uh, just say thank you and congratulations again.
Test, test. Now it's time for public comment. Yes, yep. please. Uh, good evening, folks. I hope everyone's having a good evening. It's now time for public comment. As a reminder, speakers will be called in the order in which they signed up. I believe we have approximately 17. All speakers will have precisely three minutes to speak. Um, you'll, there should be a little light that will be up on the dais when it turns yellow. You'll have 30 seconds left, and when it turns red, your, your time is over. Um, we ask that you adhere to the guidelines set forth in school board policy. We also ask that you refrain from profane language, making threats, or revealing confidential student or staff information. Um, please address the board as a whole. And note that while board members are listening and taking notes, um, they do not respond directly to public comment. So I'll turn it over to Tim. Thank you. Are we ready? Hi, my name is Samantha Gallman. I am in the Owen District. I live there and I teach at Owen High School. Thanks, better? <laughs> okay, uh, we are here, I'm here with other BCA members to deliver this petition, a request for changes that we feel are needed, a request by school employees, both certified and classified, to address the needs of our students and our schools. The items on the petition come from hard work serving school employees in the fall, analyzing the responses and highlighting the areas where there was heightened sense of need and urgency. The results were then pre uh, presented in petition format to ensure that what was parsed from the data aligned with what school employees felt to be imperative. Imperative to our schools, urgent in responding to the needs of the students and those who serve them directly. BCAE has done the hard work of condensing the sentiments of hundreds of our school employees, people who are hoping that our presentation of this petition will make a difference, will draw you in as our ally in saving public education by supporting those working with the students. We are all in this together. Everyone in this room is here because we believe in public education. It is a tenet of our democracy and a tool for ensuring liberty and prosperity. We are presenting this petition as a tool to reinforce and strengthen the belief in public schools. BCAE is inspiring people to stay in public education. We are providing the hope by speaking for other workers in our schools and for students' needs. We hope to fight the forces that are chipping away at us. We seek to build the best public education system by ensuring that we recruit, retrain, and empower the best school employees, and by ensuring that resources are equitably provided to our students. The presentations by our members tonight will hopefully help all of you understand that school employees in this petition are being honest about the needs expressed and are telling you what is needed in our schools. We know better than anyone else, we are on the front line. Incorporate our feedback, utilize our organization, partner with us, reclaim the promise of public education. Let's do better than just manage the dismantling of public education by limiting our imaginations to current budgets and prescriptions. Let's fight together for what is required to educate leaders. Give us a seat at the table. We are a growing movement that is invested with our entire lives to this cause. Thank you. Hello, my name is Macy Brown. I teach at Owen High School. Um, 
and I'm here to speak on the petition as well. Um, so the amount of teacher, uh, teachers and classified staff who have no other choice than to work, oh my God, sorry, oh, than to work multiple jobs just to get by is disheartening. We cannot stop and say, this is the way things have always been, because we are in a new world, a world where eggs cost $8 at the store, and one-bedroom apartments go for almost $2,000. We need to push harder. I know that you as a board are willing to fight for us, because you've done it before, and we're grateful for that. But the fight is not over yet. I want to live in a world where I can be a teacher who can focus on what I got two degrees in, which is teaching. Anyone who knows me knows that I love my job. I'm almost done with my first full year of teaching, and I truly want to be excited and hopeful about the road ahead. I want to see new teachers be able to come into the profession and not have to worry about being able to afford to live. We're going to lose people. We already are losing people. How many teachers do you know who have left for better paying jobs? Teachers who love teaching and who are rock stars at what they do and who have to make that impossible, impossible decision to stop doing what they love or be able to afford basic necessities. I can tell you confidently that I know quite a few. If you want to keep quality teachers in the profession, you need to fight and pay, fight to pay for them, pay them like professionals they are. I promise you that teachers love what they do. They want to be here. And at the heart of it all are the students. They are why we're here fighting. Students are our future and it's our job to prepare them for that future, a future they can feel confident in. When teachers have to split their time between multiple jobs, families, and more, they're getting more and more burnt out. Imagine what education would look like if teachers were able to focus on teaching. Imagine the lessons we could plan if we had the time, if we weren't coming into work exhausted the next day after working our second jobs. I know we all have the same focus. We all know our students are the most important. Our students are who we all want to fight for. So please, start by fighting for the teachers so we can have the resources we need to fight with you, so we can make Buncombe County Schools the amazing school system it's meant to be. Thank you. Thank you. Oakley Elementary. And your name, please? Cody Edenfield Estes. I'm here tonight to speak for BCAE as well, and I would like to talk to you about the need to prioritize right-sizing our job load. Job inflation throughout all areas within our schools and all jobs within our schools have ballooned beyond our working hours. And it's not only harming us as employees, it's harming our kids. Paperwork, class sizes, tech, uh, work outside of school, meeting, conferences, PLCs, PDs, trainings, dealing with student behaviors, and the list goes on and on and continues to grow and grow. And that's all on top of teaching six hours a day. In order to meet my students' needs, I need more time. We need productive workloads that are student-centered, not paperwork-centered. Our entire school culture needs to be refocused so that schools can be functional, <clears throat> healthy environments for us all to work in, to learn in. Our recommendations are, number one, hire a full-time sub, one per building, a super sub who works in that building every day, who knows that community and will fill in positions that are open every day. Build in five additional teacher work days that are protected from more PD and allow our classified staff who are vital to our staff to also work on those days. I know you're taking a vote tonight on one of those extra days, and I hope you choose to vote for that extra work day, but we need much more within the schedule. Protect three of our planning periods per week so that we can complete the tasks we need to work in in our classrooms to prepare for our students, what, who we're supposed to be focusing on 100% of the time. And establish a clear board policy for trade time to to clarify confusion and make trade days more equitable across all staff. All of these recommendations are pretty much free and they just take a recentering towards working conditions and rights. We need to feel more respect from you and our leaders. We need more pay, but what I want more is more respect. In order for us to do a good job, this needs to be a good job. 
Thank you. Hi, my name is Shanna Peel. I'm a special education teacher in Buncombe County Schools. Good evening, members of the board, Dr. Jackson, and my fellow colleagues. Um, I'm also currently serving as the president of BCAE, and I want to begin by expressing my heartfelt gratitude to each and every one of you for your unwavering dedication and your tireless efforts in serving our community's educational needs. Your commitment to excellence has not gone unnoticed. Today, however, it is imperative that we address the pressing issue of funding to meet the ever-growing needs of our students. We stand at a critical juncture. Today in the budget work session, we all heard of the unprecedented uncertainty we face in regards to funding from the state. That's why I would like to remind you of the bold decisions you have made to advocate for our children. Last year, you made a strong request of the county commission to prioritize funding that will enable us to continue to meet the needs of our students. I urge you to do that again this year. The last section of priorities that we've presented in our petition that so many of our colleagues have said is of the utmost importance falls into the category of student supports. We must take proactive steps to ensure that every child has equitable access to the specialized support that they need. This includes measures to retain experienced professionals and fill crucial vacancies that directly impact the quality of education our EC students receive and increasing those EC positions to address the diverse needs of our student population. It is ensuring that every school has at least one full-time therapist who accepts all North Carolina Medicaid plans so that no student that has mental health needs support goes without. Mental health is a cornerstone of academic success. Lastly, it is imperative that we maintain all ESSER-funded positions and double our behavior support staff. Overall, we need enough staff in the building to meet these very important needs, and our educators are drowning. In conclusion, I implore, implore you tonight to make a strong ask of our county commission to fund, fund a budget that prioritizes the needs of our students and educators. By investing in our educators, expanding access to mental health services, and bolstering behavior support, we can lay the foundation for a brighter and more inclusive future for all. Thank you for your attention and dedication to our students. Thank you. Bouchard, Reynolds District. <laughs> um, I am a grandmother with a preschool age grandson whose education and future is my top priority. We both live in the Reynolds District. I speak as a part of the public school strong group in Buncombe County Schools. A number of us are here, we're wearing our blue t shirts. Um, we want stronger public schools and policies that support that goal. As we all know, the Republican-dominated legislature has allocated over $4 billion to opportunity scholarships over the next decade. Those scholarships are private school tuition subsidies where families can use public taxpayer money to pay for private, often religious, academies. The Office of State Budget and Management reported last year the pending impact of voucher expansion. It said that Buncombe County Schools is projected to potentially lose $5.6 million of its annual operating budget by fiscal year 26-27. We will continue to advocate alongside you for our public schools to get the funding they need. That is con constitutionally promised and that our community's children deserve. Governor Cooper has declared 2024 the year of public schools. More than 8 in 10 school-aged children in North Carolina attend public schools. 
we must continue to invest in our public schools, and North Carolina families and communities shouldn't lose resources and, trust and choices for quality public education to help wealthy people send their kids to unaccountable and unregulated private schools. Governor Cooper is calling for us to contact our legislators in Raleigh and candidates running for those offices and specifically ask them to do four things for our public schools. One, learn about the great things happening in our public schools. Pay, atten pay teachers like the professionals that they are. Expand access to early childhood education, quality child care, and pre-K. Place a moratorium on private school vouchers until our public schools are fully funded. Instead of funding private school vouchers, let's expand access to pre-K, raise teacher pay, buy school supplies, build high-tech science labs and libraries, and help ensure that our students with disabilities get the education the state constitution guarantees them. Thank you, board members, for the fine job you're doing for Buncombe County Schools. I know you will do your best, despite funding cuts, to provide the quality education that is constitutionally promised and our students deserve. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Bill Robinson. I live in the Roberson district. I am the father of two daughters and the grandfather of two more. This is an article published in the Citizen Times that went national on television and in other national newspapers, published on February 6th, 5th of this year. The headline is Child Sexual Abuse Lawsuit. Family Sues Buncombe County Board of Education. I've never seen this before. It's got a warning at the top. This story contains descriptions of child sexual abuse. I'll clean it up for the benefit of the adults in this room. The family of a former Irwin High School student sued the Buncombe County School of Education for their role presiding over a teacher who sexually abused their child. The lawsuit filed in Buncombe County Superior Court January 30th accuses the board, this board, of negligently hiring, retaining, and supervising Albert Pavon, an exceptional children's teacher at Irwin. It also accuses the board of negligence for inflicting emotional distress against the child. This complaint alleges that Pavon groomed the child who was 15 at the time so he could sexually abuse, manipulate, and molest them, her. This included making sexual advances and sending lewd comments and pictures through Snapchat. Pavon touched the student's body parts, including her inner thigh, and made comments like, once the plates have graduated, he was going to slam her against the wall and would allow the student to perform a sex act on him, the complaint said. When they groom, quote, when they groom and they, they tend to look for the most vulnerable, unquote, plaintiff's Greensboro-based attorney Bobby Jenkins told the Citizen Times February 2nd, quote, then they start the grooming process and it gets worse and worse as time goes on. That's clearly what this guy did. Other school board employees raised concerns. I don't know who they are, but blow the whistle on the rest of your colleagues, if you would, please. Uh, raised concerns about Pavon's actions who were disregarded by school board administrators according to the legal filing. This is unacceptable. You should be held liable for this. Um, you should resign in disgrace. You should be ashamed of yourselves. This is Kylie Wilhelm, 13 years old, committed suicide. This is Sabria Bozeman, 16 years old, who committed suicide. Kylie went to Owen Middle School. Sabria went to T.C. Reynolds. You've been hiding those suicides, too. Stop hiding what's going on in the school district. Thank you, sir. My name is Elliot Lunsford, and I teach at Owen High School, and my children go to Fairview Elementary School. I believe that classroom teachers, as professionals who are in contact with students every day, have great insight for board-approved policies. 
When teachers are paid like professionals and when their voice is consulted in matters related to improving our schools, then they will stay. Good teachers are leaving, and while pay is a huge reason, so is valuing our input as professionals. I propose this board make a better effort to include more classroom teachers on district committees and in decision-making processes. BCAE has been growing tremendously and has lots of teacher voice seeking for the betterment of our profession. Also, our teacher-led school improvement teams have great potential in seeking the best for our schools. So specifically, I'd like to see this board activate the school improvement teams in this county to produce a plan to bring back an exam exemption policy for high school students next year. Excessive absenteeism has been a problem not just in this district but across the country. Students who miss instruction consistently do not perform as well as their peers. We can do something about it. I believe a return of this policy would help improve attendance and academic success. I'd like to see this board approve more classroom teachers on the calendar committee. Spreading out our work days throughout the year is important. This board should be prioritizing staff time to do our jobs well. I appreciate the board for having the committee reconvene to consider a new academic calendar for next year to give us a teacher work day between semesters, which is vital for a smooth transition and for teacher planning. And while I'm glad about this calendar change, I do wonder how many high school teachers and BCAE members were on that committee of 45 stakeholders that could have advocated for this originally. I'd like to see this board review and discuss the grading policy of giving students no lower than a 50 in the first grading period. A student's grade should be based on demonstrated mastery of the content. Now I'm fine with creating some kind of contract to help them if their grades slip, but just giving them an unearned 50 is a lie and goes against teacher integrity and professionalism. This board could serve could survey classroom teachers about this and consider a change for next year. Along those same lines, I'd like to see this board ask for data and for an account of the effectiveness of academic summer school. I personally don't believe summer school is rigorous enough or effective in helping students in their next course, but we can't officially know without data and input from our teachers. This board doesn't have to tackle these issues alone. BCAE can help lead the way. Classroom teachers should be valued. Our pay should reflect our professional expertise. Otherwise, we will continue to see good teachers leave. Thank you so much for, for your work. Thank you. Sure. Um, my name is Sarah Wilcox. I'm from the Reynolds District. And um, before I start, I want to say thank you uh, to the educators here on behalf of BCAE um, for your intention and your attention to our kids, uh, the work environment you serve in, and um, bringing forth the ways that this board and our entire community can support you all in a common effort to make our public school successful. Um, while I've been unable to attend recent meetings, um, please know my gratitude for this board and its work. I will celebrate that I was kept from these meetings because of a busy season of basketball for my favorite players uh, from the A.C. Reynolds women's varsity and JV teams, Go Rockets, and gratitude to their coaching staff and athletic department. At the beginning of March, I attended the Parents Advisory Council meeting for the Reynolds District. Um, I offer gratitude for the time and energy put into making the parents' advisory councils more impactful to Principal Fusco for hosting for our representative Rob Elliott and Superintendent Johnson. Leadership that listens, seeks to serve all kids, and offers space for dialogue is deeply needed these days. Earlier this year, I was informed of a very strict policy um, at A.C. Reynolds High School regarding vaping. I appreciate and support the work of Principal Alexander and understand the limitations he faces. There is no doubt that the county system would benefit for a program across the schools to address the concerns of vaping. In that district meeting, the idea that was floated was having kids caught vaping being given in-school suspension in place of external suspension. 
vaping aside, because this isn't really about that, at that time we were informed that ISS is supervised by teacher's aides or folks who may not have significant training. If ever there is a location for a targeted population of kids who need help, the kids facing discipline need it, and they need trained professionals monitoring and engaging them with intention, not holding space for nothing. United Way partners in important work with our kids. I don't know if they are a possible collaborative partner for this, but what if ISS was held possibly in a central location with trained professionals that held intentional space that buoyed kids, reinforced their self-worth and dignity, and took meaningless time and made it educational, formative, and valuable. This is an investment in our kids, and we have to have better solutions um, than the ones we've always relied, in, relied on. What I loved about the district meeting I attended was our capacity to be in conversation and engage in sourcing our ideas with one another. Because this model of one-way communication that is public comment it has lots of pitfalls and is kind of not that impactful. I want to applaud the county system for this intentional engagement and encourage parents across the spectrums of ideology, belief, um, belief system to consider participating. I hope that parents realize that they are invited to participate in their kids' education and work to make use of these vital opportunities. The more of these conversations we have, the better it will be for our kids. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Leanne Smith. I live in the Robertson District. I am the Library and Media Specialist at Glen Arden Elementary. Thank you for that shout out, Dr. Jackson. Um, Superintendent Jackson, Madam Chair, esteemed board members. I just want to let you know that I love books. I love painting pictures with words. And I would love to tell you stories of excellent veteran educators at my school who go above and beyond for our students every day, but who will not see a pay increase during their 15th to 24th years of service. But in the interest of time and urgency tonight, I'm going to step outside my story box, and I'm going to share some sobering numbers with you. My source is the Nonpartisan Public School Forum of North Carolina. First, the good news. Out of the 100 counties in North Carolina, Buncombe ranks 10th in ability to pay. We rank 13th in property value. Here's where the news gets a little more sobering. The relative funding effort statistic, which compares the county's base local appropriations and ability to pay per student, shows that relative effort, at the, in this relative effort rank, we are at 80. We're in the bottom 20%. The discrepancy in these numbers made my eyes pop. The top 10% in ability to pay, yet bottom 20% in relative funding effort. Now, we're aware that the majority of budget decisions are made at the state legislative and county commission levels, but you, our elected school board members are our cheerleaders. In that light, it's disheartening when we hear from our commissioners that they'd like more communication from you about our budget needs and allocations. So I'm going to present you with an action item tonight. Unify with us. Let's you and I show solidarity by going together to meet with some of our commissioners. I look forward to hearing from you about when you'd like to set up a meeting. My email is leeann, that's L-E-E-A-N-N dot smith at bcsemail.org. Together, we can affect this budget situation in a positive way. Thank you for the work you do. Thank you. Support. As we transition to spring, I'm sure you all have noticed the trees.
you get closer to the um, yeah, mic? Yeah, please? I got you. Thank you. Um, as we transition to spring, I'm sure you all have noticed the trees beginning to re regrow their leaves. The flowers are emerging from the ground and the birds song on sunny afternoons. The mountains are so beautiful and so unique to our county. However, many students aren't able to spend enough time enjoying those natural resources because of how schools are set up currently. And that's why Buncombe County should adopt the Green New Deal for schools. It would signal a shift towards creating more mindful people through the conservation of natural resources. The people who learn to treat their land and fellow people with respect are the same people who enter adult, adulthood with ideas on how to create a better society for everyone. With the Green New Deal for schools, students would learn how to do these things. Students would be able to learn how climate change affects all people, but especially people of lower income and of color. Students would learn to be more aware of politics and local government, giving them the ability to be involved if they aren't satisfied. They would know where their food was sourced from and would know it was local. They would know they could get a job that supports a green future. These changes wouldn't be difficult and would have a huge impact. We can use some of our CTE resources to show kids the ins and outs of local farming and conservation. We can apply for grants for solar panels and, and, ele and electric buses. And we can lift up our local farmers by mainly using them for school breakfast and lunches. One of the most important aspects of this is that we can use our school co curriculum to teach kids about how being in nature can dramatically improve someone's mental health. So something we all can agree is a huge issue for students in Buncombe County. So I'm once again asking you to incorporate all aspects of the Green New Deal for Schools into Buncombe County in order to create citizens that are in tune with the environment and to protect our natural world for generations to come. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ben Johnson. I'm from the TC District and a freshman at Nesbitt Discovery Academy. I don't know if you have noticed, but it seems a lot warmer th this time of year than it has uh, than others. Every month from last June has been the warmest month compared to the same months in previous years. This isn't just a statistical anomaly. It's a clear indication of the rapid and unprecedented warming of our planets. According to the NOAA, uh, NOAA the average temperature for March in the U.S. was 40.7 degrees Fahrenheit. This March, this, this March, the average temperature was 45.1 degrees Fahrenheit. Next Thursday is forecast to be 85 degrees, a temperature more reminiscent of midsummer than early spring. These temperatures may be pleasant to those like myself who love the sun, but behind these conditions lie dis disruption of the ecosystem, the exaggeration of extreme weather events and the strain on existing infrastructure and plants. Amidst the looming threat of climate change, there is hope. Hope in the form of transformation or transformative solutions. The Green New Deal is a comprehensive plan that not only addresses the urgent need to migrate climate change or mitigate climate change, but protects students, creates jobs, and promotes social equi equity. Schools are pillars in the community and should protect protect and provide for the students they support. This means updating evacuation plans to keep students safe and provide nutritious lunches. This means providing students with pathways to green jobs in order to empower students and equip them with tools to tackle the challenges of the 21st century. By providing climate change resistant infrastructure, we can protect our schools and students from the climate crisis. By investing in renewable energy and energy efficient infrastructure, schools can not only reduce their carbon footprint, but also save on energy cost, freeing up resources to invest in education and innovation for the students they provide for. The Green New Deal for schools provides an opportunity for Buncombe County schools to become beacons of sustainability and resilience in our communities. The climate crisis depends, demands urgent and de decisive action. By implementing the Green New Deal for schools, we can not only safeguard our schools and their students, but also build a more equitable, and sustainable world for all. Thank you. Thank you.
Laura Geddes for the, from the Owen School District. <clears throat> what do you want to be remembered for at the end of your career? Each of us, each of us has a value. Each of us have reasons for doing what we do. What are your reasons? Who do you serve? What do you value? As educators, we're called on to value students. First and foremost, we value their parents first and foremost because the parents are the greatest teachers of all. The parents determine really how, how well a child will do in school. The parents need to be involved in school. How can you involve parents in school? Children who come at the age of five to school, they are already been prepared or unprepared for school. And teachers are having to bear the weight of that, but not the parents. Why not make parents responsible? Because they are. If you don't involve parents, then there's an agenda, and it's a power base. Educators are there to serve the students. They're there to educate. How will you be remembered by those, your students, your colleagues, the parents? How will you be remembered? Who were you seeking after? Were you self-seeking, or were you seeking for the betterment of others? That there is an accountability. Teachers cannot do what they need to do unless the people who are making the decisions are not sensitive to them in not including parents. You cannot teach effectively without children. That is a fact. All of us are accountable. At some point, we're accountable. For the, choices, for the choices that we make. What are your choices? Who are you seeking? How are you spending your time? Is it for yourself? Is it for an agenda, a power break, a base, for your own reputation and power? You're there to simply serve. You're ser public servants. That is your purpose in life. You are to listen and respond to teachers and parents and other educators. All of us are counted. Thank you, ma'am. Carolyn Stewart, Owen School. If you can keep your head and all those about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. It goes on. Does anyone recognize that one? I learned it in public school, but then my dad, who was a doctor in Charlotte, challenged my brothers because it was called Four Boys. Does anyone know the name of that poem that I just... It's by Roger Kipling, If for Boys was the way it was. But he said that he would give them $20 to memorize that. Are you kidding me? That Back then, $20? That was a... You know, like... At least a hundred to me, um, and so I memorized it, and I didn't care that it said boys at the end. Because it has served me so well, and I know you guys feel that way. I mean, you couldn't, I and mean, you can't make everything right. You're not supposed to, but you are. And I'm going to read your job description online. What is online for a school board job description? This is what you can do. School board members, and this is 
has still, it's universal, really. School board members are locally elected officials entrusted with governing a community's public schools. The role of the school board member is to ensure that the school district representatives are responsive to the values, beliefs, and priorities of their communities. So we could ask ourselves, each one of us, am I being responsible in my community? And then school board can ask yourself, or am I being effective in my job? Am I listening and following through with the actions that protect children and truly educate them under my watch? And am I truly being accountable to the children's and families, meaning the parents and grandparents, in my school district? I mentioned last time I spoke that Tim Tebow is an NFL star, which is saying he emphasized the need to be more, um, to take more precautions and to inhibit the online distribution of child sexual abuse and rape. If we do today, if what uh, it was spoken today. Thank you, ma'am. is Jerry Nugent and my grandson attends Oakley Elementary. Um, I want to tell you about an organization called First Book that exists in um, Washington DC and it has uh, 575,000 members. It's the largest online community of educators and professionals that are dedicated to children in need across North America and what they do is supply books to um, high needs kids. They, they want to address the needs, provide free and low cost books, resources, and access to leading experts through the first book marketplace. Um, and again, it was founded in Washington, D.C. in 1992 as a nonprofit social enterprise. It's dedicated to eliminating barriers to learning and inspiring young minds. Well, they released a, a study um, in October 2023. Um, by the first book, Research and Insights. Educators report that the national conversation around book challenges and bans is negatively impacting their classrooms, profession, and student learning. More than 1,500 educators serving children in under-resourced communities responded to the first book survey to reveal educator perceptions on book restrictions in their school districts and their impact on social learning. Through this study, educators discussed the destructive impact that these book bans are having on teacher morale. The study revealed that bans have a chilling effect whether or not teachers are facing book bans in their district. The survey found that 71% of educators, regardless of whether their district has faced bans, believe book banning undermines their expertise, makes them feel distrusted, and increases their stress. These detrimental effects translate into the classroom as nearly two-thirds of educators said that book banning is having a negative impact on their ability to teach. 72% indicated that restricting book ac access decreases students' engagement in reading. More than a third of educators noted that book bans discourage students' critical thinking, and 78% reported that students are reading more when given the choice to read banned books. These findings come on the heels of another study produced by First Book Research and Insights, so there's two studies. Um, that's the organization's research arm. And that conducts studies of its network of more than 575,000 educators. Um, their recent Diverse Books Impact Study, which was released in September of um, 23, highlights the positive impacts of diverse books in classroom libraries. In a six-month pilot study, after adding diverse books to their classroom libraries, educators reported that reading scores increased by 3% points higher than national annual expected averages, and collective classroom reading time increased by four hours per week on average. Classrooms that added bilingual and LGBTQ plus titles. Thank you.
Hello, I'm Karen Bigham, North Buncombe District, and a proud member of Public School Strong. And uh, first of all, I just want to teach. I, I want to thank every teacher who came and spoke tonight. The fact that you're volunteering your evening to do this and that you prepared such articulate comments speaks so highly of you and thank you for all you do for our children. Um, I'd also like on uh, National School Library Week to thank the school board for not taking any books out of our, public, uh, our school libraries last month um, and that's what I want to talk about today. Um, I just want to say that I really understand the motivation of someone who would say, you know, we need to ban these books from our schools. It's, it's scary out there. It's a dark world for our children in a lot of ways. But I truly believe that keeping books away from kids is not the way to protect them from the darkness in this world. In fact, it may leave them unprepared when darkness comes their way. Uh, Parents very well may know what's appropriate for their own kids and make rules in, for their own household about what their children are allowed to read or not read, and that's fine. The problem comes when they try to decide what materials are available for other people's children. That's, that's not right, in my opinion. And since parents disagree, I feel that it's very important to leave broad brush decisions like that to professionals to educators, librarians, media specialists. They're the experts at it. Um, if you're concerned about what your children are reading, you should talk to them. You should parent them. But don't make rules that, uh, or don't try and have school boards make rules for other people's children. Um, in closing, I just want to say that to me, if a child is reading, voluntarily, that's a good thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, we'll move to the action portion of the agenda. The first item in the action agenda is W.D. Williams Elementary School accept guaranteed maximum price GMP and authorized construction manager at risk. Um, to re the construction, CMR is moving to the first phase. Um, do board members have questions here? Seeing none, then I would uh, entertain a motion to approve. Thank you. Second? I'll second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Next item on the agenda, accent action agenda is North Buncombe High School approval of the design build contractor. Um, any questions from members of the board on this item? Hearing none, I would entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Thank you. I'll second. Uh, <laughs> all those in favor? That's okay. Okay. I think we voted. Is that correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. 2024-2025 instructional assistant calendar guidelines. And I'd like to recognize Dr. Jackson to speak to us on this item. Thank you, Madam Chair, members of the board. As has been referenced earlier, our calendar committee consists of 45 staff members, parents, and others who come together to put together a calendar for the upcoming school year. After the board approved the calendar, teachers reached out to board members and members of our teacher advisory council reached out and asked for reconsideration of the 2024-2025 school calendar to to include a teacher work day between semesters specifically for our high schools as that is difficult work to transition from one uh, semester to another. The Board of Education asked that the calendar committee reconvene and consider the request of our teachers and I'm delighted to share with you that the teacher that the calendar committee did make that recommendation and that is an upcoming item for the board to consider. 
However, in looking at our calendar, it was recognized that if we put a teacher workday between semesters, our classified salary, our classified staff members would actually lose salary, as they are typically not paid on teacher workdays. Uh, this was extremely troubling. And so this evening, I bring to you a recommendation that we address the teacher assistant, the instructional assistant calendar. In 2010, the teacher assistant or instructional assistant calendar included 215 days of service for which classified staff members, instructional assistants were paid. In 2015, that had dropped to 203 days in order to balance the budget. In 2007 or 2021, that was raised to 207 days. This evening, I'm recommending to the Board of Education that we increase our instructional assistant calendar to 2,000 or 200, excuse me, 209 and a half days, increasing by two and a half days the number of days our instructional assistants and all of our classified staff members will be able to work, which in effect increases all of their salary. That work day that would occur now if the calendar is approved. Uh, between semesters would become an opportunity for training for our bus drivers, for our transportation safety monitors, for all of our classified staff members, giving them the opportunity uh, to serve on that day. And so this evening I bring before you a recommendation to approve the instructional assistant calendar for 24-25, which would include an increase to 209 and a half days for our instructional assistants and for all of our classified staff members. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Questions or comments from yeah. the board? Dr. Jackson, I have a question. Um, and especially, we heard a lot of um, public comment on this today, and I know that um, as we talk about budget, because we are in that season and it is such a, such a difficult conversation, um, I appreciate that we're, we're trying to put this in place. And I know um, part, of, part of the ask on the, um, sorry, on the, um, my brain isn't even working, on the priorities list um, from the BCAE is, I think, to add in five additional teacher work days. Um, but I think that was also for the uh, classified staff. And so what I want to know is, w with what we're about to vote on, what, what, is the total, what is the total cost of this? Um, what, what will this run? Sure. So for this request to increase by two and a half days the calendar for our instructional assistants and our for classified staff, there's an annual cost of $124,525. Okay, thank you. Sorry, could you repeat? I, I apologize. Um, the total cost, the total annual cost for this increase from 207 days to 209 and a half days is $124,525. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the board? Hearing none, I would uh, entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Thank you. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The next item on the agenda is 2024-2025 Buncombe County Schools calendar for um, early college and the Buncombe Center for Career Innovation, their academic um, revisions. Uh, do any of you have questions in, on this item? Hearing none, I would entertain a motion to approve. Thank you, second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Sorry, I have to turn this. It's now time for the consent agenda. I'll read those items. Minutes from March 7, 2024, regular meeting open session, the personnel report, 2023 and 2024 budget amendment four, records retention and disposal request, intent for publish, uh, purchase of E-rate related network switchware gear, intent for purchase of non-E-rate related network switch gear, sole source procurement request, constructive learning design. Policies for second reading include policy 3210, parental inspection of and objection to instructional materials, policy 3610, the counseling program. I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. 
Thank you. Second? Second. Could I ask for some discussion? Sure. Um, just to call out the policy for second reading around the counseling program. Um, and this is probably just for Dr. Reed to clarify, um, if you don't mind. <laughs> Easy. Um, but this, this, this uh, came through the policy committee, um, and uh, the policy will now be called Counseling Program-Student Support Services. And I just wanted to highlight it out to the board, um, and Dr. Reed, if, just to clarify, a lot of the changes that were proposed for this policy came from an advisory council. That is correct. We have counseling and social worker advisory councils. So they did, did, and they brought this new language uh, to the policy committee for They did. It was a collaborative effort, and they did um, submit the language for the policy. Yeah. I just, uh, one, I just want to say thank you to that advisory council um, of all of our counseling and social work staff uh, for bringing this to our attention. It really broadened our um, definition of what, our, what was known as the counseling program in our policies. It broadened it into student services, student support services that talks about, um, you know, the need for engagement with, that it's a whole system around of support for these students. It includes parents, it includes teachers, it includes the student, the community, and most often, and most importantly, the, the, as well, the student uh, support staff. So that's where our, it's a, a lot of brand new language in this policy, but I, I thought it was, um, a great update, and I just really wanted to express my appreciation to that advisory committee for bringing it to our policy committee. Absolutely, and Dr. Johnson did a wonderful job leading those those two committees. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the board? Hearing none, um, all those in favor of this item? Aye. Right. <clears throat> Any opposed? Our information agenda, we have finance reports and the policies for first reading. Policy 5001, Advisory Councils to the Board, and Policy 7520, Family and Medical Leave. Um, our announcements for future meetings, there will be a special called Budget Work Session on April the 26th at 1 p.m. here in the Minatorium. Uh, the next board meeting, um, our regular meeting, will be May the 2nd. The work session and updates will begin um, and a closed session beginning at 4 p.m. in the executive conference room, and then open session will begin here at 5.30. Um, I need to I entertain a motion to adjourn. So no, moved. Moved. There for a minute, I thought y'all wanted to stay here. <laughs> yeah. Could I get a second? I'll second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>